covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. If you enjoy your weekly tech news with a slight Linux bias, become part of our fleet. Choose your rank at patreon.com slash category 5. Let's get into it. The official .com domain for Perl programming language was hijacked last week. That's coming up. But first, OnePlus co-founder Carl Pei has revealed next to nothing about his new company, but we'll tell you all about it. Carl Pei left the company last year and has already announced the founding of a new one, which he calls nothing. Yes, you heard that right, nothing. Though the company's first smart devices are expected to be released in the first half of this year, Pei hasn't yet said what they will be, nor which companies they might compete with. What he has said is that Nothing's mission is to remove barriers between people and technology to create a seamless digital future. He went on to say, We believe that the best technology is beautiful yet natural and intuitive to use. When sufficiently advanced, it should fade into the background and feel like nothing. In an interview with The Verge, Pei explains that plans for nothing are to create numerous products with the intention of gradually accumulating a uniquely branded, intertwined, and here's the key word, seamless Internet of Things. Pei says, right now the team is being built, so we want to focus on simpler categories, but as our team gains capabilities and skills, we want to start moving up. The ultimate vision of having everything connected in a seamless way, that can only happen when you have multiple categories of products that are connected. In recent years, one of the main criticisms of OnePlus, Pay's former company, was that its smartphones in particular had seemingly become carbon copies of phones released by its well-known competitor, Oppo. There's a reason why a lot of products on the market look quite similar, Pay says. It's because they share a lot of the same components and the same building blocks, end quote. Nothing, on the other hand, will be using custom-made components from the get-go, so it won't be relabeling somebody else's products. The unique designs aren't merely intended to be different for the sake of being different, however. The intention is for them to not be noticeable at all. Pei explains, I kind of envision a grass field with people having a picnic, and there's no screen, there's no laptop screen, there's no phone screen, there's no smartwatch screen, there's no billboard screen. That's kind of the end state. He does admit, though, that it will likely take several decades to get there, to a future where technology looks like nothing. What would such futuristic technologies entail? Are we talking holographic screens or ocular implants? Post your comments below. What do you think could be on the horizon from nothing? One can only imagine, but Pei has a knack for building hype, that's for sure. He's given us just enough of a glimpse of his vision to whet our appetites, get us talking. But we're going to have to wait and see if this will be much ado about nothing. So we got to talk about nothing. Yeah. <laughs> It's. I, I like the fact that he called it nothing. Yeah. Uh, and and I mean, what could it mean? Well, exactly. But I mean, as as Becca was, you know, walking through the story, you start to understand that nothing is more than just the name. It's the it's the essence behind the. It's actually clever. Yeah, it yeah. is. You know, it's it's like, what do you need to make this happen? Nothing, because it's going to be so seamless. It's really it's no different than uh, Elon Musk and his boring company. You, know, you think so? It's like the name is boring. Oh, yes. But, but it's, it's for boring. <laughs> it's a play on words. Yeah, yes. exactly. And yeah, so I, I, gotcha. I, I like that. And I mean, this is an interesting concept uh, to have everything run so seamlessly mm -hmm. across multiple devices. It's not a new concept. It's but, been in sci-fi since the 80s. Right. Yeah. But what he's looking to do is so interesting because everybody else right now piecemeals their internet of things so it's like oh we'll connect with this we'll connect with that yeah but you have to do so much in the background like uh -huh. if you have say an echo uh from from amazon yeah it's like you have to install the skill and then it connects with that and you, it's like there's Can so be. much setup mm -hmm. it'd be neat to see how this all plays out and i mean he says what was it 20 to 30 years i don't think it's going to be that long i mean look how much technology has changed in oh sure years. well and you know what's going to happen is we're going to see the initial you know, what What are the first devices? Yeah, for sure. That we'll probably see within the next couple of years. And, I, I and as we so. do, we'll start to see the vision that uh, that Carl Pei has for nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's going to be just a funny play on words for the, for the next while, for sure. But one day, this is going to be, it's like Google. When Google first started, it's like, it was such a silly word. Right. 
But then now it's like synonymous. It's being used as a verb for searching the internet. And it's so much more than just search. Well, and Google's a great example because there's so much going on in the background with Google yeah. that you don't know. Yeah. Like if people knew truly how much <laughs> Google was impacting their lives and the background that goes on with like the, the search bots and the different algorithms and whatnot, they would go, oh my goodness. Like there's so much engaged here. And so, Indeed. so Google how already has been doing this a little bit, but not to the point of it being an assistance in life. Yeah. It, it's more so an assistance with the internet. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, but it does what, I mean, for me, the one thing it, it, it brings to mind is um, privacy. If everything is so seamless to the point that you don't even have to worry about it because it just takes mm. care of itself, mm -hmm. is there a privacy concern? And is there eventually going to be pushback on that where, pe where people are going, hold on, this is so seamless, I don't actually realize what it's doing. And so that's going to be an interesting development over the years to see where does that take us and is is it crossing the line? It's an interesting point. And, and look back at this video, you know, five years from now and say, hey, Jeff called it, right? Um, because as companies develop technologies that require less and less user intervention to get things like setup done, and, and you mentioned the Echo devices, and it's like it has become a very seamless mm -hmm. process. I mean, I bought a, a light that I simply plugged in and it showed up in my, in my app. And it yeah. was like and automatically connected, and I could start using voice commands to control it because sure. it's on the same Wi-Fi as my Echo device. So it was able to pick it up and detect it and work. Mm -hmm. um, so, but as things get more and more easy from the end user perspective to set up and to use, it does take away our ability to understand Correct. the technology. But that's where... We're going to have to surpass that point where mm -hmm. we've crossed over into now we no longer understand the underlying technologies of the things that we're using day to day. Yeah. We're already there, but there is that pushback. That's right. And so that, and that holds up innovation. And, and as innovation pushes toward that, there is going to have to be something's got to give. Yeah. Yeah. For What's sure. it going to be? We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll tell you about nothing later. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Sorry, we got to wear our masks because of a lockdown here in Ontario, Canada, but we are all smiles today. That's true. I my eyes are squinting. <laughs> you, you have to look really closely at my eyes. All right, Becca. The official .com domain for the Perl programming language was hijacked last week. For the past 24 years, Perl.com has been used by veteran Perl contributor Tom Christensen to provide information about the Perl programming language, but the famed domain was suddenly taken over by someone else and promptly began distributing malware. As it turns out, the domain was in fact quietly, sto quietly stolen last September while registered with Network Solutions, and on Christmas Day was transferred to a registrar in China. Since the party responsible for hijacking the domain continued to point the DNS to the actual web server, it remained online and nobody appears to have noticed. Then, a bit more than a month later, January 27th to be exact, Perl.com went down and was pointed to an IP of a known malware distributor. While the Perl team says that there is no news on the recovery of the domain, they're doing all they can. They've set up a temporary URL to allow users to access the site until they get the domain back, which is the obvious hopeful outcome. They clearly weren't thinking of news coverage when they created the subdomain, however, which is now perl.com.perl.org. To be clear, that's perl.com.perl.org. For now, stay clear of perl.com entirely. Becca is absolutely bang on correct there that you've got to, at this time, avoid that.com. Oh, for sure. Like, I, can't, I couldn't believe they put that in the name. Like, pearl.com.pearl.org. Like, why? <laughs> that's, that's why? Ridiculous. They just weren't thinking of us. Um, the, the thing is, you may think, well, I don't go to pearl.com. I never bring up my browser and head on over to pearl.com. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. A lot of us are Perl programmers, but... There is the fact that a lot of us use Perl, mm -hmm. and a lot of us, therefore, use CPAN. That's right. And CPAN is like an installer archive system for uh, Perl applications. And, and if you use that, it may be tapping into Perl.com in That's its right. back end. So when you think about that and you start to realize, oh my goodness, they have the power now 
to replace legitimate packages with malware. Yes. So as I'm installing things with CPAN, well, guess what? It's not actually coming from the official Perl.com. It's coming from some malware distributor who is known to be a malware distributor. Yes. So then we've got web projects and servers and third-party projects that use those resources, and that's a scary situation. 100%. It really can be. But the other side to this story, I mean, you're looking at it from the perspective of a Perl programmer, you know, a, a user in that regard. As a general consumer, somebody who I have my own websites, sure. I'm sitting here going, this is a reminder that you want to make sure that your account security for your hosted web domain is secure, mm -hmm. that you're using a reputable hosting company that... Uh, your domain oh, but registration is... information is, you know, secure so that these kind of things don't happen. Like, <laughs> how did they get access to controlling the domain? I think you just got to keep a closer eye on it. Like, use NEMS Linux and sure. and monitor your domain because I don't think it really even comes down to are they are you with a reputable registrar because they were right. But the thing is, I mean, Perl, they're all programmers. Yeah. They're people who know the programming and the things. Yeah, for sure. And they still, this slid under the radar. And for yeah. a month, another entity owned their website. And Oof. they did it so seamlessly. So this is, a, to me, it's a good reminder. Pay attention to your websites if yeah. you are, you know, especially if you're, you know, you say you're hosting a WordPress. We know how many times we've heard about WordPress sites being, you know, hacked and taken over. Sure. Grant, that's just this like, is a whole other level. Though. Absolutely it is. This but is hey, like if you're going to host a website, make sure that this information, you know what's going on and it's protected. Yeah. It's locked down. Speaking of locked down, that comes to mind that if you register a domain, make sure with your registrar that you lock it. Mm -hmm. Because there's a little toggle that you can flip there on your registrar that says lock this domain. And what that means is, is that if anyone ever tries to compromise it or take it over or transfer the ownership or transfer the registrant profile, um, it will require your intervention in order to allow that. That's if it's right. an unlocked domain and they get a hold of the transfer, the registrant transfer code, they can conduct that registrant transfer no problem. That's right. So lock your domains. Yep, please. Don't miss the other stories we're following this week. First, did Spam Cop block your email this past weekend? You're not alone. Plus, Elon Musk has augmented a monkey's brain with a wireless implant so it can play video games. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you catch the full stories. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Thanks for watching.